Hi guys, welcome back to Learn with Med Nuggets. In this video, we are going to learn about one of the most common congenital heart diseases, that is ventricular septal defect, also known as VSD. A ventricular septal defect is a bird defect of the heart in which there's a hole in the septum that separates the ventricles of the heart. There are three types of ventricular septal defects. Membranous VSDs, muscular VSDs and subpulmonary or infundibular VSDs. Membranous VSD is the commonest type. In membranous VSD, the defect is in the upper section of the ventricular septum. So what happens in a ventricular septal defect? When there's a hole in the septum between the left and the right ventricle, during systole, when the left ventricular pressure is higher than the right ventricle, blood will shunt from the left to the right side of the heart due to the pressure gradient. But during diastole, there will be minimal to no shunting because the left and right ventricular pressure during diastole is almost equal. Due to this, you will hear a murmur throughout systole, but not during diastole. This murmur is called pan-systolic murmur. This is best heard at the left lower sternal edge. The intensity of the murmur is greater in smaller ventricular septal defects than in larger ventricular septal defects. This is because when a large amount of blood passes through a small area, it produces more sound than when it goes through a larger area. So during systole, when blood is shunting from the left to right, the aortic valve and the pulmonary valve are also open. So as soon as blood shunt to the right side, it will go to the pulmonary artery and then to the lungs. And from the lungs, it will come back to the left side of the heart through the pulmonary veins. Due to this, there is a volume overload to the left ventricle because blood from both the left ventricle and the right ventricle are coming back to the left ventricle through the pulmonary veins. So there will be a left ventricular dilation. Due to this, you will notice a thrusting apex and over time it can even result in left ventricular failure resulting in features like bilateral basal crepts. And due to the volume overload to the pulmonary artery, pulmonary hypertension can also develop, resulting in a loud second heart sound. It is important to note that a ventricular septal defect can be missed in the first week of life. This is because the pulmonary resistance in early infant life would still be high, just like in the fetal circulation. Therefore, right ventricular pressure is also high. So there is no significant pressure difference between the left and right ventricle. Due to this, there is only a minimal shunt and therefore a ventricular septal defect can be missed in early life. So examining the child for ventricular septal defect should be repeated after a few weeks as well. Now let's move on to the diagnosis of ventricular septal defects. In addition to the clinical examination, we can use a chest x-ray to support our diagnosis and a 2D echo will confirm the diagnosis of a ventricular septal defect. In the chest x-ray, you will see white lungs, also known as plethoric lungs due to the increase in pulmonary blood flow and an enlarged heart due to the left ventricular dilation. The best modality for diagnosis is the 2D echo. This will show the position and the size of the ventricular septal defect. Moving on to the complications. One of the most important complications to look out for is Eisenmenger syndrome. Like I explained before, due to the large amount of blood going to the pulmonary artery, pulmonary hypertension can develop. This will in turn increase the right ventricular pressure. When the right ventricular pressure increase, there will be a reversal of the left to right shunt. Therefore, deoxygenated blood will shunt from the right ventricle to the left ventricle resulting in cyanosis. This is called Eisenmenger syndrome, which is a life-threatening condition. 
So if a loud second heart sound is heard, this indicates there is pulmonary hypertension and the child can go into Eisenmenger syndrome. Therefore, surgery and correction of the defect must be done before the development of this life-threatening condition. The other complications are failure to thrive, heart failure, respiratory tract infections and increased risk of developing infective endocarditis. Most of the membranous ventricular septal defects close spontaneously, especially small ventricular septal defects close spontaneously. For moderate ventricular septal defects, device closure can be done. This is where a catheter is used to place a small device to cover the defect. Massive ventricular septal defects require open heart surgery. This involves opening the thorax and the heart. If the child is too small to undergo a major procedure like an open heart surgery, then palliative surgery can be done to avoid complications like pulmonary artery hypertension. The palliative surgery done is called pulmonary artery banding. This is done to decrease pulmonary blood flow and thereby avoid pulmonary hypertension and the development of Eisenmenger syndrome. Muscular ventricular septa defects close spontaneously and subpulmonary does not close spontaneously and is associated with aortic regurgitation. Therefore, surgery is required in these patients as well. A quick summary of ventricular septal defects. It is an acyanotic congenital heart disease with a left to right shunt where you will hear a pansystolic murmur at the left lower sternal edge and a loud second heart sound due to pulmonary hypertension. A thrusting apex can be felt due to left ventricular dilation. To diagnose, we can do a chest x-ray and a 2D echo. Isomenger syndrome can develop due to the reversal of the left to right shunt. Most of the ventricular septal defects close spontaneously. If it doesn't, then device closure or open heart surgery can be done. For palliative care, a pulmonary artery banding can be done temporarily. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe to support our channel.